What day is it today? Today is Wednesday. Wednesday? Well, obviously we're not doing any wheels, we're not doing any waxing. Um, wet sand Wednesday. Y'all have been wanting to hear about this one for a little while. Everybody's asking about wet sanding. Everybody wants to do it until you do it once, then you probably never want to do it again. But stressful. we're going to show you. It's stressful, what do you call it? A lot of work, a lot of cleanup. Mm -hmm. um, but the results can be absolutely amazing if you know what you're doing. As you can see here, we have plenty of different options and things that you can do. You can either do it by hand, which he gets to do, Always. or you can do it by machine, which is the fast and easy and probably the better way to do it because you get uniform removal of all your defects. All right, now what would you be using wet sanding for? Tell these beautiful people out there. Well, you would use it for things like orange peel, and what you get orange peel from is usually a respray, okay? A lot of times um, people will get their car painted because mm -hmm. they need it. Yeah. Or, you know, they've had some factory clear coat failure because factory clear coat is thin. Very thin. Very thin. So you'll get your car repainted and you'll get orange peel. Uh, if a clay bar won't take it out uh, as far as like the windows and the areas, you'll start wet sanding on paint. And mm -hmm. that's what it's for. It's also great for uh, burr dropping etchings or for water spot etchings. In that case, compounding yeah. doesn't remove. You did every other step there is and it's, just, it's still there, that spot, still Why there. Why is this still there? Wet sanding is an option, of course. We want to leave it to the professionals and mostly towards non-factory paint. Yes. But like we said, factory paint is very thin. Thin! Um, very thin. But so basically what he's trying to tell you is wet sanding on factory cars, you know, factory paint jobs, not very highly recommended mm -hmm. unless you really know what you're doing. Okay? It can be done, but you have to know what you're doing. Yes. Now this is basically a technique that is more for like the custom hot rods that you see out there, a custom motorcycle, you know, where they, you know that you have tons of clear, tons of paint to work with. You know, basically you ever been to a car show and you seen the flames underneath mm -hmm. and they have the nice pinstriping around and then you look and it's like smooth as glass across that. Well, the reason why is because the painter, he turned around and buried all those underneath probably like eight to 10 different uh, uh, coats of clear on there. Then they sanded it down to the top level and that's why it's so smooth. So that is where this comes into play. Mm -hmm. So, without any more talking and anything like that, we're gonna put Punish Boy over here because he is Punish Boy. I'm Punish Boy. And uh, what he is going to do, he's gonna demonstrate on how to do it by hand. So, I'm gonna let him take over. I'm gonna step out of frame real quick, zoom in on him. You're gonna be right here. Where are you going? I'm gonna zoom the camera in oh, on you, okay. man. I'm putting a little mark down for you. Ah. Um, so, I'll be back. This is getting nerve-wracking right here all by myself okay first thing you want is to have a nice bucket of water okay soapy water is good too because it helps lubricate the uh, sandpaper you want to throw this sandpaper I'm a glove guy because you know dipping your hands in soapy water is not my thing you want to dip your sandpaper okay into this soapy water so that it kind of soaks up and it's kind of getting you know, pre-saturated with... Uh, malleable? Yeah, malleable. That's a good word. Jesus, if, if I knew what I meant. Um, you want to usually start around uh, 500, 1,000 grit. Um, work your way up into the higher grits. Refine those areas. Uh, right I now, right now we're starting with 2,000 grit. Okay? It's just for demonstration to show you how to do it. Yeah, they don't trust us with real cars, so they gave us one. <laughs> well, they trust me with a real car. I don't know about they you. They don't trust me. All you would do, you Let would me take get, this. Make sure you're in frame on that. You would take this grit, okay, uh, and you would wrap it around this block. I like to center it about, about two inches, so you get it wrapped here, and then you do a full wrap around, okay? And then just like that, okay? And what you'll need, as my handy dandy friend did, was you'll spray some water. You want it nice and wet. Why? Because we are wet sanding. Dry sanding is a different animal. Yeah, that'd be for like wood, working yeah. in your wood shop. <laughs> Sand, yeah. Um, also, as you saw, this block is about three inches, I'll say, right? Yeah, something around there. About three inches. You can cut it down. So that okay. way you can get into smaller Two inches, places. one inch. So you're not stressing having to do different angles and working your hand around, flatten it out. Yep. That'd Boom. be perfect for like little, little, little areas that you can't get into with the big block. All right. All right, you ready? This is, this is it. 
So you kind of want to do... I'm going to need some more water here. Spray me down, buddy. See, teamwork makes the dream work. You kind of want to go in W's. Yeah, you don't want to go just straight in a cross hatch because then they'll make the the marks that you're putting in there where they're just like this. You want to come across and go across that way. It's kind of like when you're painting your house, you want to do, you know, kind of tight V's or tight W's as they would say. And right. now, if you feel you it grab a little, you'll want to spray some more water because like I said, you want this as smooth as possible and not grab so that you're not taking too much off. That and then, I'm sorry, I keep on trying to button No, in. it's okay. But um, explain to them what this is. This is clear coat. You're sanding, this is you're your sanding paint? clear coat. This is it, this is it right here, this white milky stuff. So don't be afraid. I'd be like, what is this? It's milk. No, it's not milk. <laughs> it is clear. So. And what you're doing is you're taking ever so little bit of the top layer of the paint off to balance it out down to your minor defects, say your etchings, scratches, whatever that you have in there. You got a towel? I do you? have a towel. This should be enough. Yeah, it's just for showing these guys how to show how to and do tell, it. right? Show and tell. You should have a clean microfiber because if it is dirty, if there's anything in it, you're gonna be scratching in there, which I'm gonna tell you about when we get in. Oh over boy. Here. Okay, as you can see. Um, All right, let me get in there and zoom and doom and doom and in. You All might right, want to explain them the dullness, what that, what that is. Yes, this right here, as you could see previously when I was working my hands in, this is your sanded area, okay? This dullness is from vigorously scratching the clear coat off into this sanded area, and you shouldn't have removed any defects that were in there, any orange peel, uh, etchings, uh, as far as uh, you know, bird droppings and water spotting, and this is what it'll look like. Mm -hmm. Now, there's, it's still clear coat. Mm -hmm. We haven't gone through into the paint and defected the clear coat at all. All we have done is kind of leveled it down more. Right. And next that you would do is you turn around and you come in with your compounding mm -hmm. with either, you know, well, like what I'm going to demonstrate over here, uh, a heavy cut uh, compound. And you can either put that on a foam pad or a wool pad because a wool pad mm -hmm. on a rotor will definitely take that out. But that's another skill set that you need to do. So we're breaking it all the way down for the entry mm -hmm. level people. Um, but next thing that you would do is you'd come in and you compound this out. Then you turn around and look, make sure that all your defects are gone. Then you turn around and put polish on top of it and bring it back out to a high shine like is over here. All right, so let and uh, you go I'm ahead. Sorry. You, another no, you another go ahead. point I want to show is that this is, uh, I mean, obviously it's not a perfect rectangle or perfect square, but in this general area, it's perfectly grayed out is what I'll call it because we're on a black panel. It's perfectly grayed out where it shows evenly that everything was sanded down. And these top areas here, though it's not bad, this is what you don't want. You don't want too spaced out. You don't want it, you know, uh, not looking pretty much leveled out and yeah. grayed. You want to stay consistent. That's right. right. So, well, you got the polish and stuff. I know, I'm coming. I just <laughs> got to get the camera all set up here real quick. So, basically, yeah, go ahead and flex for them. You know, it's not Flex Friday. It's oh, yeah, what whoops. It, uh, wet Sanding <laughs> Wednesday. Why don't you go ahead and tell them? And we did come up with a name for our channel. We did. We came up with Auto Geek Uncensored because Though we need a censorship for the both of us, we've decided to go with Auto Geek Uncensored. Um, that's what you can ask me across all of our social media platforms, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook. General consensus was that one. That was tight. That was between that and Geek Tips, but Auto Geek Uncensored, I think, kind of fit us a little bit better. Yeah. Um, we are kind of uncensored, and we're bringing it to you raw, so Auto Geek Uncensored, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you all for voting. All right, so now what I am going to do is I am going to show you guys. Let me get this see how over this here. works out. See how this works out. I'm going to use the little three inch griots. These things work great for small little areas, or if not, you can turn around and get the, you know, the bigger uh, orbital polisher, either, you know, port cable, griots, uh, Meguiar's, you know, anything like that. But what I'm doing is I'm just going to do a small little area. I want to show you this little place right here. 
Um, there's a deep scratch in there because I want to show you what will happen uh, doing a wet sanding with this little scratch and also all these other little scratches that you see right here. And do me a favor real quick, just hold your finger. I just want to make sure that it's all in focus. So that way we, we get this all captured right here. All right, you are in focus. Right there. Yeah. We got to get that right there. That, that right there. That one right there. All right. Now, because I'm the punish boy. You are the punish boy. He is honored with machine sanding. Um, I know that could be a little bit more scary because with your hand, you could feel. And also, when you're working with a hand, jewelry all comes off. Because what could happen? Turn around, take that, your ring goes across. Now you got a big old scratch like this going into your paint. You don't want uh, that. You don't want that. <laughs> um, me, I'm working with machine. And just let's back this up just a little bit. Me, personally, I've painted quite a few cars, custom paint jobs. I've did a lot of, I don't know how many motorcycles that I've painted in my life, doing a lot of airbrushing. I'm an artist. I like to do things. Motorcycles is one of my things. I painted a lot of them. The thing is, when you go to do wet sanding, uh, any type of paint correction, you always want to make sure that the surface is clean. Mm -hmm. um, you don't want any uh, dirt marks or like, especially if you're working into a shop where they're doing metal grinding or anything like that, you could get metal on top of it. And then as you go to wet sand, guess what you're doing? You're grinding that little piece of metal, dirt, whatever, into your paint and actually creating more work for yourself. So always keep your work area clean. So what I'm doing, I'm just putting down a little bit of the paint prep totally wipe it all down. I mean, it was clean. I'm just, that's what I had on hand right next to me. Ooh, nice. And look at that. It, is it so, smells good too. It's so clean. All right. So what I'm going to do is when you come to doing sanding with a machine, you don't want to just slap the paper straight onto the backing plaid and go. The reason why? is you want some sort of interface in between there. So that way it gives it a little cushion and it gives you, it actually makes the stuff work a little bit better and it's a little bit easier to do. There's many different types of backing adapters to there. Some are, man, that one's like foaming all over the place. Look, now you gotta prep it again. Now I gotta prep these, it again. These are interface pads, okay? Uh, we have some from Griot's. Um, McGuire's. And I believe 3M uh, makes them as well. I think McGuire's too. McGuire's, yeah. yeah. So what it is is about an yeah. inch, half inch. Half inch, you can see right here. Yep. And yeah, this it is allows, McGuire. yeah. And it allows um, this flat sanding disc to give it a little bit more space. Like you said, you want to be able to, if you have to, those, those rough panels, uh, you know, to go over them without any issues, without right. the backing plate digging into it. Right. Then the ones with the holes, as you can see here, the ones with the holes, it, what that does is it just allows a little bit more cooling because you don't want to work the surface mm -hmm. while it's hot. You got to think, you got water there, okay? Um, so you don't want to sit there and grind, 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 grind. So what we're going to do is I'm going to use, I've always had good success with this one right here. So I'm going to turn around and take this, put it right on there, make sure it's on there good. And that little bugger is just like going all over. Um, what I'm using is the 2000, as you can see, the 2000 grit Avalon. Then I'm going to put this right on top of it. So now you can see I got some foam interface. I mean, you could pretty much the Avalon, you can almost get away without using the thing. I like it because that way I can contour that to whatever panel that I'm working on. So the first thing that you're going to do, you're going to, what are we doing? Down. Well, you can spray the panel. I just want to spray this. You want to turn around and take your surface of your pad here. Oh, I like that. And get it wet. I like working everything wet. And as you can see, I got water up on there. You can give me a little bit more. All right. Now, should be good. When you go to do this, always make sure that your polisher is turned way down. All right. You don't want to start at six and next you know you're slinging water everywhere. You don't need a high speed for this. You just need to go slowly, smoothly, and efficiently, basically. So what you're gonna do is I'm gonna turn it on. You wanna make sure that your pad's rotating. I'm gonna turn this up to about a two, two and a half on this, just as long as that's rotating. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna let the, actually I'm gonna bump it to three. Sit there and go, and you're gonna start seeing your slurry cut start coming up as it starts cutting in. And I'm not putting any pressure down. I'm not sitting here pushing down on it. I'm just barely pushing anything on it. 
I'm letting the polisher and, actually I'm like talking over that. I'm letting the polisher and the sandpaper, or the sand pad, sanding pad, um, do all the work for me. So that way I'm not like Punish Boy over here and sitting there having to sweat it out. All right, so I'm gonna just keep on going. Spray a little bit more water down. Like I said, you wanna keep it lubricated. And this is nice soapy water. And as you can see, I'm just going back and forth about 50% over the top of one another of all my passes. And there you can see now I'm getting my nice little slurry coming on. Alright. And it doesn't take long when you're working with a machine. It doesn't take long at all. You go too long, guess what? You just removed a lot of paint. All right, so now what you'll do. Before he wipes off, look at this section right here, a nice square, where I was a little bit more spaced out because I have no control of my hands whatsoever. It's a lot more tedious so, to stay in a general area when you're you working know, by hand. I'm, my hand, I probably went two sizes of my hands and because I'm working vigorously and you may not have the best, you know, perception of where you're working, where the polisher, it's so easy, you're letting it do the work, you could You're just directing it, you're, yeah. you're, you're driving it is basically what you're doing. Now, there's a couple different ways that you can do this. You, you can got the sandpaper attached to oh, it. Oh, wow, look at that. Um, you can either turn around and use a backing pad Whoa. to turn around and take your grid off. Now, as you can tell, I've did this a couple times before. <laughs> Or you can just turn around and wipe it off. Well, you'd spray it with water, but I already wiped stuff off. And as you can see, I have a nice uniform area. Let me get that dry. Nice uniform area that has been wet sanded. Okay? That's now beautiful. what you would do, and I'm sitting there looking, I don't think I have to worry about that other uh, that little scratch that we had there. That is gone. Gonski oh. Munski. Looks good. All right, now, so let's just show you how fast this is to work with. And it's not, you know, everybody thinks like, oh, wet sanding, I wanna do it, I wanna do it. Then they do it like, oh, it's so hard. But guess what? If you just work smarter, not harder, it's really pretty easy, wouldn't you say? Yep, I would say so. I would say so too. So It, it is, it's an intricate process. It is simple. It, it could go <laughs> badly, but as long as you follow the steps and making sure that everything that you're doing is correctly and you know what we're suggesting to do, you'll be fine. Yeah, it, well, just work. It's an easy you process. Know, from the higher, um, what do you call it? You know, like the 4,000, 3,000, 4,000, mm -hmm. 5,000 grit. You're not going to do as much damage. I went with uh, a 2,000 on that, which I could have went all the way down to either you know a thousand grit or a 1,500 grit. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna show you the difference between these two. I'll, I'll save you because you're, you're, you're punished, boy. I'm ready. Um, Uber I'm gonna, all in one. I'm gonna take some, I thought I, thought I had the Uber, I'll, I'll go Uber get compound. It. I'll get the Uber compound. All right, hold on. While he's getting Uber compound, we're gonna pause for me to do a rendition of the Canadian National Anthem. La, 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 la. That's Actually, I don't, not it. I don't know the Canadian National Anthem. But basically, what we're trying to say is there are going to be some areas where you're going to have to do this by hand. All right, you say, um, like I did a, a 87 Trans Am that had a pro stock hood on it. There's no way that I could put a polisher underneath where that hood or the hood scoop's at. So I had to get in there by hand, creating little tools like these where they're the perfect size to get up in there. And actually, I even made one that was, uh, I took a, a curved piece of rubber and that actually, where it was actually rounded like this, put the sandpaper over the top of that and went around the curve and it worked out great. You just gotta kind of gotta use your head and this find, is Uber compound. And find what works for you. But there's areas where you're gonna have to know how to do it by hand, then the majority of the time you're gonna be able to do it by machine, which to me is, you know, by far the easiest way. But just letting you know, there is some places where you're gonna have to do and do it um, by hand. Come on, don't be camera shy. Oh, it's so pretty. Look at that. Should be a cake decorator. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> Cakes by Yancey. All right. Ooh, you're doing my side? Uh, I told you I was even gonna be nice. I'll do your side, then I'll do my side. I love this guy. All right, um, <laughs> again, whenever you're compounding, turn your polisher down, put your cord over your shoulder, and spread out your product. Alright, I'm just going to do this one little area here real quick. Alright, 
I lost count. <laughs> but as you can see, Here, you, can, we're not talking about that, but... you could already see the results while he was polishing, removing those sanding marks. All right. Now, let me get the camera and bring that in. Show you guys wow. real quick by hand how you can remove. Go ahead and put your finger down there if you could. All right, as you can see here, obviously this is the wet sanding area. This is where we just compounded. You can see a little bit of in between. And that right there, that compound just removed a 2000 sand grip. Um, Uber Compact can remove, I believe, up to a, a 1500. But you there still you get great results with this. All right, and then we'd, we'd follow up with a swirl mover or finishing glaze and yeah. that's it. All right, now let's go ahead and put your finger back down there so that way I can get these guys back over here. All right, so now, as you can tell, we still need a polish on that side. Mm -hmm. Now I'm gonna show you the difference on this side, how fast I can remove it out, because this is gonna be a little bit more uniform than that one, just because the way he might have went over this way a couple more times, where this is pretty much the same all the way around. So again, Uber Compound, just gonna put a couple little drops on here. I like the special effects that you're giving me. That's amazing. What a musical talent. Music. Hey, I sang the Canadian National Anthem, which I don't I'm glad I don't walked know. out for that. <laughs> Aw. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, again, turning my polisher down, spreading my product out, picking it up. not having to push down hard at all. Eh? should be about enough. Okay, go ahead and re-wipe that off. And basically, what that should have done is turn around and taken it totally wow. out. And as you can see, we still have a little bit, where's my... Um, where did I put the scanner? Right there. Where? Oh, there it is. You're, look you're looking right <laughs> at it. I'm looking right at it. All right, as I float out a screen, so that way I can make sure I can show you what I'm showing you. All right, so basically what we're doing, is if you remember, there was a scratch right here, all right? And now you can see there's barely any of that scratch mm -hmm. left right in it. But next step that we would need to do is turn around and use a polish, which let's see if we get some swirl going on. Mm -hmm. You can see a little bit. Of, a little bit there. A little bit there. So the next step that you would do is turn around, grab you a polishing pad, Slap that bad boy on. Turn around, grab what you got the polish. There? I have an advanced finishing polish by Pinnacle. I always, found, one. I always found that these two always works really good for me. It's a good combo. Um, 
I'll do your side too. That way we can show. Turn this down. Spread it out. Well, if I can get you to hold the hood so it doesn't float around on me. I gotcha. All right. Turn it up to about a five. Kind of creeping out a little bit. I didn't think it was that big. Now I'm like this big. What are you doing? <laughs> I'm creeping out, man. That scratch is almost totally gone. All right. That's about only about four or five suction passes. But no, this uh, Wolfgang combo and a pinnacle combo that I got going on here, it's actually, it, it works really good. Wow. All right, now let me get that. Yeah, that scan grip. Yeah, I got it, so that way I can angle it over towards the camera. And as you can see, our scratch was right here, which is kind of non-existent right now. And that is, as you can see, some of those other squirrels. Squ squirrels. Squirrels, you said it too. <laughs> squirrels. Um, all the other defects that we didn't remove, mm -hmm. and then you come down here, and this is the defects that we did remove. And as you can see, it is totally flawless. Flawless. Then we still, there's a little bit of marring going on there, where this one there isn't, so I'm just going to come back over. Oh, actually, I'm not. I'll turn around and do that later. Yes, we will. Um, <laughs> we'll turn around. And we do will that do later. it later. We will do that later. So Later basically, here. the next thing that I would do is turn around because I'd like to coat my stuff. Then you would remove any of your polishing oils, double check your work, make sure that it's totally satisfactory with what you want. Then you can turn around and lay a coating or your favorite wax over the top of it. And that is how you wet sand. Simple any one. questions? Uh, I have one. I was waiting for them to ask a question. Uh oh. All right, what? Well, no, I don't have a question. All right, well, there you go. <laughs> um, so that is how simple and how quick and easy it is can be to do this as mm -hmm. is can be. Man, where am I learning to talk today? <sighs> uh, scary. <laughs> it's Monday. It's scary. <laughs> oh, no, it's oh, Wednesday. No, it's Wednesday. It's hump day. Hey. Um, so <laughs> shut up, Camel. <laughs> yeah, see, yeah, see, yeah, see. <laughs> so basically, if you want, uh, if you have any other questions about this, put it down in the comments down below. We're glad to help you out. Mm -hmm. uh, we can send you over some articles. Uh, we can also, you know, we'll answer your questions, but we can send you some more in-depth articles that Mike Phillips, you know, everybody likes Mike Phillips. Um, he has some really nice wet sanding articles. And yeah. also we have some other videos on there on our YouTube channel. So product this, advice, anything like yeah, that. Yeah, we just wanted to show you how to do it. Get you a little bit, if you want to go down this path, give you a little bit of headset so that way when we call you can talk to their sales reps and they'll be glad to help you and just tell them that you know our geek and censored sent you yeah right? yeah we'll get you a nice little discount cue the backup beeper and on that and on that i'm and going that. back up out and you do your side back. Ah. finally got him back <laughs> <laughs>